Everyone remembers Eric Stoltz's amazing role in Back to the Future. Right? No, wait. That never happened. Well, did it happen? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Overly Honest Movie Reviews. My name is Chris, and as always, I try to give you guys what you want to see. Please like this video, then subscribe and follow me for more content like this. I cover anything and everything related to movies, both old and new. Okay, so Hollywood's a business. As much as we'd like to think that it's all about our enjoyment, it really isn't. So something happens more than even I knew behind the scene, and sometimes right in front of your eyes. The truth is, actors get replaced, sometimes early on, before they even sign contracts, sometimes after weeks of work, sometimes after the film was a success and the money-hungry studios are ready for a sequel, but the actor isn't. Even odder, sometimes a film has been shot, ready to go, with Oscar buzz around it, and then they have to replace an actor. Okay, so I decided to try out a new format. Instead of the normal script, or just completely off script, I decided this video I'm going to try some bullet points. So I basically selected a group of actors that cover all these different categories, and in each one I'm going to just talk about a few of the things about him or her, what happened, what the result was, you know, and so on. Up first, the last one that I was talking about, all the money in the world. So this film had Oscar buzz in it going early on. Kevin Spacey played this role, and then we all know what happened. There were allegations. There were more than allegations. Um, I'm not here to talk about that. But what I am here to talk about is the fact that this came out two months before this movie was scheduled to be released. Two months. In that two months' time, they not only found a new, a new actor, Christopher Plummer, they got him on set. They shot 22 scenes in eight days. That's just absurd. Um, so much so that Plummer was even nominated for an Oscar for this role. I really enjoyed the movie. I, I really did. Uh, I think it got hyped up a little bit more than it probably should have because of all of this. But, you know, rightfully so. I mean, he got nominated for a supporting actor for coming in last minute shooting 22 of scenes and making a pretty good movie. Honestly, as cross I am about the whole Spacey thing, and I mean, like, Baby Driver was one of my favorite movies, and he's in that, and it's got a weird... I don't know. It's weird. I don't know how I feel about it. I know how I feel about him, but I don't know how I feel about past works that I enjoy. I'm honestly kind of curious. So, I mean, the movie exists with him in it somewhere. I'm assuming it's locked up in a safe somewhere so it doesn't ever get leaked. But, you know, the, the full All the Money in the World movie exists. It was two months from it being released. So I'd be curious to see how that worked. Probably one of the most famous ones on this list is Back to the Future. So originally they had hired Eric Stoltz to play the role of Marty McFly. So much so that they got five weeks into filming with Eric Stoltz. At one point, Robert Zemeckis just wasn't on the same page. Had Stoltz's comedy style wasn't fitting with what Zemeckis had seen or wanted in these movies. So he decided to pull the plug. In doing so, they brought on Michael J. Fox, who we know the success that that became, in turn helping his career furthering you know, into stardom. Um, so that, that was pretty interesting. Stoltz honestly said that it was for the best. I find that a little hard to believe with the success that Back to the Future was. But, I mean, he went on, he had been in Anaconda, Jerry Maguire, Pulp Fiction, uh, Spots on Grey's Anatomy, Mad About You. So, I mean, he, he did have a successful career and I guess still is acting. Come on, who, who would say that missing out on being in Back to the Future was for the best? I got a kick out of this one. So, Christian Bale actually stole a role from himself, kind of? So, he was offered the role in American Psycho. Then the studio, unknowing to Bale, went behind his back and went after Leonardo DiCaprio, which... He, you know, it's Leo, big name, big time for him. So, I mean, you can't fully blame the studio. I think it was a little weird about their timing after already kind of offering the role of Bill. The irony is, after it all, Leo backed out because he wasn't liking the way it was headed, and Bill bailed them out and returned. Honestly, it worked out for both of them. Christian Bale and Leonardo DiCaprio are both two of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Both have had amazing careers. So, you know, I don't think anybody's losing sleep at night over 
over this one. I was a little shocked when I found this out. Apparently Anne Hathaway was originally intended for the role in Knocked Up. She agreed then she found out about the graphic birth scene at the end and she got a little weirded out and backed out truth be told even with katherine heigl's issues in hollywood she rocked that role sadly after the fact heigl even trashed the film knocked up and you know the rest is kind of history with her although it is fun to imagine what hathaway would be like in that role so sit down if you're not already apparently sylvester stallone was originally cast in beverly hills cop stallone was cast as axel foley I'm so glad that he didn't like the comedy and he had tried to get them to rewrite it by rewriting it himself. Thankfully, the studio went with Eddie Murphy and the rest is history and Beverly Hills Cop's amazing. Okay, so most people probably know about this. If not, um, for the Transformers franchise, well, at least the original franchise the way it was before Bumblebee and now who knows what the future is going to be because of COVID and their indecisiveness into how they want to proceed. So Megan Fox was in the first two movies, then was fired from the third movie. Apparently at some point she had compared Michael Bay to Hitler, calling him a nightmare to work for. I guess Steven Spielberg stepped up and told Bay that he needed to fire her. So I don't know, it's pretty convoluted. Despite the criticisms of Bay, Fox came out to, in his defense, clearing him of reports of being assaulted or preyed upon while she was younger. In my opinion, the whole thing was still weird. I won't post the video here, but, you know, you can YouTube other channels or Google it. She was in one scene in Bad Boys 2, and very inappropriate for a 15-year-old. I don't know if she lied about her age, I don't know if they didn't care, I don't know what the details are. I mean, there's mixed comments one way or the other. I just, I, I think it was still weird. That being said, Rosie Hunting, Huntington Whitley took the new role, and the film still gross over a billion dollars, so honestly, it didn't really hurt the Transformers franchise. I don't know, I thought it was kind of diminishing returns after the first one. It took me like three years to see, what is it, Transformers The Night or not the Dark Knight, <laughs> whatever it was. I like the Transformers franchise. I just wasn't, you know, it started to get a little too weird for me. This one hits a little close to home, not so much in that I have anything to do with it, but that I really liked the original actor. In Iron Man, Terrence Howard played the role that eventually Don Cheadle would end up coming in to take. So this is more of the standard like, hey, we have a movie and now there's a sequel, so now there's a new actor. They also did it with Mark Ruffalo replacing Edward Norton for the Hulk. I don't think Marvel would do that anymore. Honestly, I think they're too cemented in their entire vision. Both the Hulk and Iron Man were both the first two movies in the MCU. So I think they had a little more like, hey, we can do this and no one's going to really notice. Apparently, Terrence Howard was offered a very small amount of money for him to be basically Iron Man's sidekick in Iron Man 2. So I don't blame him. It's a shame because I did grow to like Don Cheadle in that role, but Terrence Howard was just perfect in Iron Man. My opinion, but you know, that's what this is all about. Liam Neeson. So who would have the guts to pull something away from Liam Neeson? Apparently, the movie Lincoln... Steven Spielberg directed, he had offered the role of Lincoln to Liam Neeson like 10 years before the movie was actually made. I guess the split was mutual. Neeson said that it wasn't for him anymore, that he had, he had evolved past that type or that role. I, it, it wasn't a disagreement anyway. I mean, Spielberg was fine with it. Neeson was fine with it. Daniel Day-Lewis was amazing, even though I wasn't a big fan of the movie, but, you know, which is weird being from Illinois. But anyways, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. This one got me because I had never heard of this. Apparently, Sean Connery was wanted for the role of Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings, like from day one. I mean, they, they wanted him in that role. <laughs> and the irony is Connery didn't get it. Not that he didn't get the role. He said, liter he literally said, I never understood it. I read the book. I read the script. I eventually saw the movie and I still don't get it. And I love that. It's just, you know, he doesn't get the role. He doesn't get 
that, which is weird considering he, in Highlander and all that. Anyways, I'd say we all lucked out. Although I loved Connery, Sir Ian McKellen was perfect in that role. Another fun one, Matthew McConaughey was apparently supposed to be Jack in Titanic. All right, all right, all right. No, no, no. As much as I gave Titanic grief when I was younger, I wasn't a fan. I was in high school when it came out. It was a girly movie. And let's let's remember that's in quotes because by no means is that a girly movie. But ever, everybody liked DiCaprio. And I think I had to be that cool guy that didn't like him at the time. Um, thankfully, James Cameron saw Leo and, you know, never looked back up for that point. He, he made the perfect Jack. Titanic has some flaws, but overall, all. I mean, Leo is an amazing actor. I love the movie now. I'm not afraid to admit that. Leo is fantastic in it. He's had an amazing career, as I discussed earlier. Wasn't a huge fan of The Revenant, but outside of that, I mean, his body of work is pretty much undeniable. This time we get into another Michael J. Fox recast, even though Michael J. Fox wasn't recast, but someone else, he was <laughs> came in for another role. I know that's confusing. Anyways, in the movie Teen Wolf, Michael J. Fox played Teen wolf in the original movie so this one's a bit different in the sequel jason bateman bateman was offered the role so the character actually changed but the movie still followed a pretty similar premise i thought bateman was fantastic i like teen wolf 2 i like teen wolf i've never seen the series don't hold it against me um but the script really suffered it, it lacked originality and it got a little weird at times apparently there was a third film in the series planned i'm assuming had the second one been successful they wanted to bring Alyssa Milano in starring then that faded away then there was another one that got turned into the 1989 classic Teen Witch so I say classic loosely I love it for all of its cheese best dance scene ever so I know I'm a movie channel but I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that TV shows are notorious for this I'm just gonna touch the tip of the iceberg this is gigantic tv does this constantly so i'm just gonna go through these i'm not even gonna really discuss them if you find any of them curious interesting you want to know more leave a comment below and i'll definitely go uh, you know i'll do a deeper dive so kaylee kuko wasn't supposed to be the original penny in the big bang theory there were actually two different carols in the show Friends. A more recent example is Ruby Rose's departure from Batwoman. This one, kind of heart heartbreaking, but I, you know, once I found out, it was a little bit easier to swallow. Love the show The Goldbergs, but when they recast Rowan Blanchard with the Lexus Zoll, I was heartbroken. I loved Rowan Blanchard, both in Girl Meets World, which was the sequel series to Boy Meets World, as well as Adam's for girlfriend in The Goldbergs. So apparently it was Blanchard's decision to step away from the role so i'm really not too mad about it and i understand why the directors and producers didn't just go ahead and have a write in a whole nother love interest because adam's kind of a geek and for him to have like three girlfriends within the first few seasons would have been a little unrealistic although they have continued that and it's still very unrealistic so animation gets the treatment as well in Family Guy, Lacey Shabert, 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 I should probably know how to say her last name. Um, she played Meg in Family Guy, which the show's even mocked and parodied. Mila Kunis eventually stepped in and was perfect and still is perfect for the role of Meg. Then we all know Aunt Vivian's issue on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Jana Hubert Witten's issues with Will Smith. Apparently there were words said that could obviously never be taken back. Thankfully Daphne, Daphne Maxwell Reed came on and never looked back. I mean... I still love The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, so... Okay, so this was probably the most fun that I've ever had researching for a video. This is a really deep rabbit hole. So I only kind of skimmed the surface of some of some of the bigger ones or some of the ones that I connected with for movies and TV. If you guys like this, I will definitely keep going. There could potentially be a second, a third, and probably many more if you guys like learning about this. It was such a fun topic and it happens so often. With that though, I ask you, what was your biggest shocker on this list? or your biggest shocker that I didn't mention. Thank you guys for joining me. Please comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to like this video, then subscribe and follow me if you'd like to see more videos like this.
This one took me longer to do than I thought, only because I wanted to do more thorough research. Hopefully I'll be getting back into a regular schedule starting next week. Any suggestions for the next video?